G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam and in this video we're going to talk about the data views in Salesforce Marketing Cloud. I'll take you through what each of the data views are used for and what data is captured inside of them. We'll also do a deep dive on how these data views are related and how you can use them to enhance your targeting and segmentation for your marketing campaigns in Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So to start with, what is a data view? Data views are just SQL tables in the back end of Salesforce Marketing Cloud they're used to capture various types of data. For example, I'm here on the data views documentation page, and we can see a full list of the data views that are available to us. So for example, the data view for bounce gives us all the bounce data for emails that have been sent from Marketing Cloud. We can see the click data view for every single click activity that is recorded in Marketing Cloud, as well as the sends, jobs, journeys, and so much more. So you can think of data views as the system tables. It's all the views that you need to get all that backend data, all that data that's being collected when Marketing Cloud sends emails and records those opens and clicks from your subscribers. If you've used other email sending platforms, you might be familiar with these terms. The sends, the opens, the clicks, complaints, bounces, unsubscribes, and so on. Having direct access to this data in Marketing Cloud allows you to see the records for yourself and use that data for retargeting or suppression. Marketing Cloud uses these data views to expose data in various parts of the platform. For example, in the send tracking, you get access to how many emails were sent, opened, and clicked, as well as bounced and unsubscribed. You can also see these data views being used in the measures section of Marketing Cloud, where you can see measures such as the total unique opens, unique clicks, and the total marketing sends last 30 days. These out of the box features are easy ways for marketers to get direct access to their engagement data and also to create engagement lists and targets. If you want to create some more advanced segmentation lists, the best way to do so is using SQL and these data views. So before you get started writing SQL to access these tables, let's have a quick look at what data they contain and how they relate to one another. The best place to learn about the data views inside Marketing Cloud is the Salesforce documentation site. Now I've put a link to this page in the description below, and so you can go here yourself and have a quick look around at the data views that you can access. As you click into each of these data views, you get some good information. You get some information about what the data view is and does, what its name is and how you can access it, as well as the columns that are contained within this data view. So as you've probably noticed, there's quite a few data views in Marketing Cloud, and trying to understand how they all relate and what they're used for can take some time. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and created a data view schema to showcase how each view relates to one another. You'll find a link to this diagram in the description below so you can take a look for yourself. For today, we're just gonna focus on this section of the diagram as it pertains to the messages and journeys section of Marketing Cloud. So let's now zoom in and have a closer look at these data views. So let's start with contacts. Now there is no contact table that you can access inside Marketing Cloud, but I have put this reference table here just so you can see how the contact ID and contact key relate to various parts of the platform. Now you can access all of your contacts using the filtered mobile list function. I won't cover that in this video. Instead, let's focus on the data views and our next speaker's data view, which is the subscribers data view. The subscribers data view, when accessed from your enterprise or parent business unit, will return all the subscribers in your email studio. That is all the customers that you've tried to send emails to. And this data view contains the subscriber ID and subscriber key, which is the unique identifier that identifies each of these subscribers in your business units. It also contains their email address and their subscriber status. You can of course use that status to identify which subscribers are currently active or unsubscribed or even bounced. And as you navigate this diagram, you'll see that as you hover over each table, it connects the tables together with these relationships. Now the one, and the asterisks have specific meanings. A one to asterisk means one to many. For example, the subscriber key in the subscribers table and the subscriber key in the list subscribers data view is a one to many relationship because in the subscribers data view, there is only one subscriber key with that value. But in list subscribers, that subscriber could exist multiple times, once for each list ID. You can also read that in reverse. The list subscribers table has multiple subscriber keys that match back to a single subscriber key on the subscribers data view. So now that you understand how this data view works, let's have a read through it. 
As you go through each of these tables, fields, and data types, and you can see their relations, you can check back on the Salesforce documentation to understand what they're used for. It's important to understand how they relate so that you can understand how the data is structured. For example, a subscriber can be sent an email job. The email job represents the sending activity from Marketing Cloud, and the send is the email being sent to a subscriber. Now, of course, once an email is being sent, the subscriber can choose to open that email. You can open an email multiple times. But of course, the first time you open it, the email open is unique. And within the email, there's multiple links. And you can click those links uniquely and uniquely multiple times. So a click exists inside of an email. So does the open and so does the send. You can also see more data such as the bounces, forward to a friend, and the social impressions and tracking. If you have a look down here as well, we've got access to the journey activity and journey data views. The journey activity relates back on the job ID. So in Journey Builder, you can have a look at the triggered send definition object ID as it relates to the journey activity object ID. This will give you a way of linking your subscriber data back to your journey activities and back to a journey. So if you're trying to find out, for example, every time a subscriber has clicked on an email sent in a journey, you can quite easily select from your subscribers, accessing all of their clicks, where the clicks emails triggered send definition object ID relates to a journey activity, journey activity object ID, and that journey's version ID relates to the version ID in the journey table, which gives you the journey name. And that's just one of the many, many ways that you could use these data views to create more advanced segmentation and suppression lists. Some of the most common ways though of using this data is what's used inside of the measures. Now I've made a whole separate video, which I'll link in the description below, where I'll go through and rebuild each of those measures using these data views in SQL. For now, I hope this introduction to data views and the resources we've gone through, including the documentation and this database layout, have been useful to you and you've learned how you can use data views to create more advanced segmentation and engagement data inside of your marketing cloud. If you have enjoyed it, please let me know in the comments below and don't forget to give the video a like. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you are notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud content.